In this video, we're going to show the Memorial Designer mobile workspace along with the Surface Pro 7 and the Advanced Plotting Devices 15 inch plotter. On the Surface Pro 7, on the top left, you've got the power button, then a volume up and down buttons. On the right hand side, you have a USB C port, a regular USB port, and then the charging port here. Underneath that is just a little notch so that you can get to the kickstand. If we fold it down, you'll see how you can just stick your thumb in there to get to the kickstand. When you open that up, on the left hand side is an additional port there that you can put a micro SD card in for additional storage. And then right here, you're able to plug in the magnetic charging cable. It just snaps in there and it would light up if it were plugged in. It's not right now. On the back, you've also got a camera so that you can take pictures from the back side. On the left hand side, it's only got the headphone jack and then when you open up the cover the keyboard cover itself is magnetic as well so it just pops off when you don't want it if you want to put it back in you just simply put it down near the base and slide it in until it snaps in it'll also snap to the top to the screen itself you can just snap it right in there You've also got cameras on the front and microphones on the front so that you can do web cams and also log in if you set up Windows Hello. And that's overall the Surface Pro 7 there. For the cutter, if you need to ever pull out the blade, you just turn this knob counterclockwise, unscrew that until it's unscrewed enough that you're able to get to the blade and pull it out. The blade holder has this black portion that's protecting the blade. You unscrew that as well. As soon as that's unscrewed, then you'll have access to the blade itself. The blade is just magnetically in there as well. So you just pull on the front of it to get it out. Once it's replaced, you screw the cap back on and put it in to the machine. Make sure that it goes all the way down, seated really nicely, and then you just screw that back clockwise until it's nice and snug. Along with the cutter, you also get a stand so that if you want to pull right off the roll, you just put the roll of stencil in there, feed it in through the back toward the front, and there's a little clamp here that you push up and down on in order to get those pinch rollers to seat. You can move them over when they're up just to get it so that it's got nice traction. And then you can move your stencil forward and backward to get it exactly where you want. This is also where you mess with the speed settings as well as pressure. So for each roll of stencil, you really want to set and make sure that it's cutting correctly for that particular roll of stencil. So you would set your speed and your pressure and do a couple test cuts just to make sure that it's cutting well. On the right hand side, you've got a USB cable. You've got a parallel port there that you would only use if you're plugging into an old computer and then you've got your power here as well with your on and off switch. The AC adapter for the car or truck, you can just plug it in right there and that plugs into your cigarette lighter. A nice feature of this cutter is that you're not limited to using rolls of stencil. So if we push on this, now you can see how we can adjust all the way back and forth those pinch rollers. So if we rolled out the roll of stencil, we could actually just get a scrap piece of stencil and put that in instead. This one's not the best, obviously, because it's got that fold in it, but just to show you how it works, if we put this piece of stencil in there and adjust the pinch rollers to make sure that they're set appropriately and then clamp it back down right here on the back then we can move that stencil forward and backward so it doesn't matter if we've got punches in our stencil or if we have a roll of stencil you're able to just use scraps as well if if needed which is very useful when it comes to cutting death dates i'm going to show you from start to finish real fast how to do this for the tablet, you just pop it open like this, and if you prop it up in the back, there is a little leg that pops out like this. I'm going to show that to you. So we 
going to do that with we're just going to open up curl draw and we'll also open up the plotting utility at the same time so normally i just keep curl draw open throughout the day as i'm working on things okay as soon as everything's open come over here to text and i'll type in a date december 23rd 2020 okay and then i click on this button to build our frame up here at the top i'm going to rotate this so i'll just move it under it doesn't really matter I, I don't have to move it under the page because as soon as i hit my plot button it's actually going to resize it to fit that for me and then all i have to do is come over to here because we don't have it plugged in it, it's not showing up yet so we've got the usb cable it plugs in over here and then we'll just turn it on right there this part of the usb cable Let's put into the tablet over here. So as soon as that gets plugged in, it makes a noise. I'm just gonna close this out since it wasn't open, or since it wasn't plugged in. So I'll just reopen it. The serial port column will then pop up. We'll say select file, untitled. I hadn't saved it, so it's just saving it as untitled. So I'll open that up. The stencil gets loaded into the back. So we'll just load that in the back here. And there are lines here that you can line it up. That way you can line it up on the bottom and the top there just to make sure that it's in line. There are little rollers here and here. So on the back is a lever. As soon as you get it lined up, you pull this lever up. And what that does is it puts those wheels down. If I push on it again, it'll lift it up. So it puts those wheels down in place. You're gonna also, if you need to, just reach in behind it. You can move those wheels out and position them where you want them to go. And then Again, just pull up on that lever to, to put it where you want it to go. And the home position, it already did the home position, but if it wasn't in the home, you can push home and you'll see it goes across and it comes back. Okay, so once that's done, just come back over here and say send. It gives you a warning just because this uh, software is also used for their firmware. So you can just say yes. And as soon as that's done, it'll start cutting. Because it will take a couple of minutes for it to cut the stencil out completely, we'll go ahead and just speed up this portion of the video, just so that you don't have to watch the entire two minutes of cutting. Alright, so now it's done. I'll just push back on that lever again so it releases those and pull the stencil out. And then we can look at the stencil. So on the stencil, we've got the, the two lines there. It might be hard for you to see. Um, so we've got those two lines there. We've got a box all the way around everything. And then we've also got our, our text so we can start pulling this text away. Not quite as fast as I used to be with pulling, so I'm gonna speed this up as well. There we go. We've got our date. We can cut that square out and place it on the stone with our alignment marks. Got our center alignment mark here too, on the top and the bottom. And we're good to go.